it's been a while since I did a live and I thought today, Friday, it's the perfect opportunity. I'm going to do a live. And also there's a thing that's been bouncing around in my head for a little bit. So time to get it out there in the big bad world. Uh, my name is Shannon Coates, of course, as you probably know. Anyway, here I am. And today, here's my little spiel while we just wait for some people to get on and blah, blah, blah. Say hi if you're there. If you're watching this on replay, hashtag replay in the comments. <laughs> Apparently you're supposed to do that, so there you go. <laughs> hi, Jim. Uh, so today I wanted to talk, I wanted to deconstruct a voice exercise that my fabulous colleague Jennifer Cooper described for working on registration. And I wanted to de deconstruct it even further than the fabulous, um, first of all, demonstration and also explanation that she already made in the Full Voice podcast. So if you are not listening to the Full Voice podcasts um, and you're a podcast listener, I can highly recommend that you take, you do some listening to their, to her podcasts. And if you're a new teacher or if you're getting bored of the exercises that you use all the time, something that you might try doing is uh, going through the podcasts from about the last, let's say five to 10 minutes of each of the podcasts that Nikki has put up so far and listening to the exercises that she asks her guests to describe and make that your exercise of the week for your studio. So that might be something interesting to try. I just had that idea a couple of days ago. It's like, oh, that would be fun to do, to use all of those exercises. It's such a great resource um, Nikki's uh, podcast is for good um, teaching information. So that's one way that you could use that information. So the exercise that, or the podcast episode that Jennifer Cooper was on, and I'm gonna throw up all the links afterwards. I'll do that when I post this officially or whatever, um, is ep episode number 101 called Balancing Performance and Teaching. And the whole episode is fantastic, of course. And um, like I said, the last 10 minutes of that episode, Jennifer um, describes, I think she actually has like three or four different variations on an exercise that she uses for registration work in the studio. And um, I wanted to just deconstruct deconstruct one of those exercises and show you how I've been using it in the studio with the um, uh, singers that I work with, but also with the teachers that I work with and how we've been kind of like finding ways to incorporate it in teaching and, and work, working on it with, um, every, with their own voices. So here's the exercise, or at least the version that I'm using. And the funny thing is, the funny thing is, um, I was listening to the podcast episode when I was getting ready to teach one day, and one of the singers I work with um, was listening to the podcast episode on her way in as she was driving in to, for our session, and she was driving in and she was listening to it, and um, Melody, hi, it was Melody, and she comes in and she's like, there's this um, exercise I wanna try, and I'm like, is it the one from Jen, Car Jen uh, Cooper's episode on the full voice? And she's like, yes, and so anyway, it was great. So. Just so you know, Jennifer Cooper, your name has been bandied about in my studio for however long it's been since you did that episode. I'm just looking over. I don't know if the date's on there or not. Maybe, oh, November. Since November. Two months now. Three months. Been talking about you. Okay, here's the exercise. The exercise is to, this particular one anyway, is to start in a low point in the range, and we're talking um, mostly female singers at this point, um, to start in a low point of the range in a chest voice configuration. So in other words, we're starting with however we want to describe chest voice from the larynx. So we're talking about, um, or from the vocal fold uh, configuration. So we're talking about thick folds, we're talking about short folds, we're talking about thick edges, we're talking about, um, mode one, we're talking about speech level, all of the things that we call it. I'm just going to use the shorthand chest voice because we all know what we're talking about, but I mean, when I say chest voice, I mean that the folds are thick and they're in that short, short, thick configuration, that square glottis configuration. So the folds look like this. They've got nice thick edges when they're meeting. Every time they meet, they're thick, thick edges. So you start with a, with a chest voice and you start at your highest volume at the bottom of the exercise. And as you move up in pitch, you go to a low volume. So here's what we do. And I'm just gonna do this one in a one, three, five pattern. 
with an open vowel. So I'm just going to do an ah vowel. Um, and this is a contemporary shaping in the vocal tract, so I'm not doing an oh shaping, I'm doing ah. So I've got a contemporary shaping of the vocal tract there. So this is the sound. Ah. Uh, so you hear how I did like pretty loud on the bottom, I did a medium loudness on the, on the third, and then a relatively quiet um, loudness on the fifth. And in that low range, uh, and then we just move up by third, or by, um, what are those called? Semitones, thank you, thank you. We move up by semitones, and we just keep doing that. And in the lower part of the range, by the time we get to about, say a G, so by the time we're doing C, E, G, by the time the top note is a G, all the way below that, so below where an untrained voice is likely going to start to switch over in, or, or start to have some registration issues from chest voice to middle voice or however we want to call that, uh, that transition area, especially in an untrained voice, um, that whole area, basically it doesn't matter what vowel shaping you use. E can be quite useful in that area, um, but an A ah open or an O vowel, all of the almost contemporary, even, even your classical shaping down there is likely going to work. So if I use a A, ah, I mean, I sound like a, you know, a mangled tenor there, but a classical tenor, but even a relatively classical sh uh, vocal tract shaping where it's sort of rounder, I've got uh, you know, high soft palate, I've got space between the molars here, I've got a wide open pharynx, I've got my forward, uh, what are those called? Lips. <laughs> All of that classical shaping, that will likely also work to keep, and you will likely be able to stay in chest voice up until that G. And uh, so that vocal track shaping, you can almost play around with whatever shaping you want. You can do an E. And the the change within the vocal tract, whatever I did with my vocal tract shaping, gave me various levels of roundness, darkness, twang, brightness, all of that kind of thing, right? So what I did with my vocal tract shaping changed the quality of the sound externally, but my voc my vocal folds, the change in the volume is from the vocal folds. So what we're doing from there to there, from that sort of octave range, I started at an A3, and then eventually we're gonna get to about a G4, uh, so a C, E, G. And uh, what's happening at the vocal fold level, and, and Jennifer alluded to this as well when she was sort of talking about what these exercises do, but what's happening at the vocal fold level for us to increase and decrease volume as we're moving higher is the vocal folds when we're in the bottom uh, when we're in the chest voice configuration or that thick fold configuration there's lots of real estate available to us every time on the vocal folds every time we vibrate so every time the folds do an oscillation my cats are going crazy over there sorry if it's a little loud uh, every time they do a, uh, every time they meet every oscillation or every vibration the vocal folds can meet with the thick end so we get 90% of the real estate meeting every single time they vibrate or they can meet with a relatively thin edge where we get 10% of the real estate meeting every time they vibrate. So here we have 10% of the real estate meeting every time. They're still vibrating at the same speed. Here's 10% and here's 90%. So if I've got 90% vibrating, you can hear that that's going to be a more robust sound. It's a greater amplitude in the sound wave. It's a more robust sound. And if I've only got 10% meeting, it's likely not going to be as robust because there's less amplitude in the sound wave. Um, so what that does as we're moving up in pitch is it helps us to coordinate what, how much real estate is meeting every single time we vibrate at different frequency rates. So we start at a relatively low frequency rate, especially for the female voice, say 220 cycles per second, down here meeting with a thick 90% of the real estate meeting every time we vibrate, and then we move up to whatever this is, 260 or whatever it is, 265, um, at like C sharp, I don't know, I can never remember what the 
the frequencies are. I can remember like A440 and like I can remember that it's like 1052 or something like the high C is. I don't know. I can never remember. Anyway, whatever it is. Um, so then this, when you get to the E above middle C, again, we're doubling, we're, we're increasing the frequency. But what we're doing is as we increase the frequency, as we're still in a chest voice configuration with our thicker folds, increasing frequency, but we get only 10% of the folds vibrating or a relatively smaller area of the folds vibrating as we're moving up into that upper um, pitch. So what we're doing is we're creating in our students or we're creating this muscle memory and this coordination. So we're helping our singers and to do a chest voice that is a light chest or a heavy chest or an intense chest voice versus a soft chest voice. So as I get up into G then, as we start to move into middle, uh, middle mix and middle uh, voice, and when I'm talking about middle voice, I'm talking about maybe E4, um, and I'm talking about that to maybe like a B flat or a B above that, so a B4 above that. So I'm talking about that area there. So when we start to do that, uh, when we start to do the same exercise as we're moving up through this area of the voice, that middle area of the voice, especially the female voice, uh, especially the female voice, we're talking about the vocal folds going from their thickest edge already into transitioning into more of a thin edge and uh, in terms of the actual vocal fold configuration as we move into a pure head voice, which is thin edge. When we move into that, um, we start to mix the, the, the vocal folds themselves, start to go from full thick edge to thinner edge. So that we, and this is kind of simplified, but essentially it's correct. It's correct enough. Uh, so we go from four fingers, maybe we go to three fingers now. So we've got three fingers vibrating. So as we're moving up through here, maybe I've got three fingers, three fingers, and now two fingers vibrating. So I'm moving right into a head voice configuration at the glottis, but I want to stay in a chest voice mix. So that exercise becomes, ah, uh, because I'm still asking myself to do that lower dynamic volume at the top so that I can get that coordination going so I'm not doing full open belt at the top, right? Maybe we do want a full open belt at some point, but for the most part, that we don't want to get too yelly at the top. We want to get a nice configuration going. And always remembering that in our contemporary sounds, we have a mic for amplitude. So we don't need to be loud at the top, right? We have a mic. That's what that mic is for, it's for amplitude. So when we go up, or for uh, loudness, so when we're moving up this way, by the time we're getting to a G-ish and above, we also need to take into consideration what the vocal track shape is doing. The sound wave that's being produced at the, at the glottis at this point does not want to bounce around in a really big space uh, or in a classical shaped space. This sound wave needs to have a different shaping going on in order to be happy. So if I try to keep my classical um, shaping as I get higher up uh, into the into those mixy parts, um, say like I said a B6 or so, if I try to keep my classical shaping, here's what happens. Oh. doesn't like it, doesn't sound good, sounds like a really bad baritone or something like that, right? A really bad classical baritone, sorry baritones, uh, but it doesn't sound right, it's not good. So what we have to start doing is translating into the kind of shaping in the vocal tract that a contemporary shaping in the vocal tract that the vocal tr that the sound wave that we're creating from the glottis and from the vocal folds that that sound wave likes to bounce around in. So something like this. Uh, have to be that wide at the top not necessarily for me it does because of my mouth shape but something like ah the width of my mouth up there and some of the things that are happening in the back are going to determine the level of twang or the level of brassiness that we have at the top there excuse me, or the level of thinness too. Sorry, I'm getting some weird lighting things happening here. Sorry, I'm not sure why. Oh, it's because the sun's coming in. Dang it, the sun, huh? The sun. Um, I also need to plug in my phone because it's about to go dead and that would be so sad in the middle of this live. There we go, plugged in, I think. 
So when we start to get up into that higher, so that was a B flat, that becomes a chest mix because we're asking our singers to stay in. Let me see if I can get out of the sun. <laughs> I'm such the pro, eh? Such the pro. So as we get up into that higher chest mix, we're asking our singers to stay in chest voice in a chest mix way, and we're putting uh, we're putting our um, uh, vocal tract shape into that contemporary shaping, so that the sound wave um, doesn't mind. Wow, that's a mess too. Okay, let's do that. Uh, so the sound wave doesn't mind bouncing around in the shape. So we do this guy. Uh, Again, we're coordinating the level, the amount of real estate that's meeting on every single one of those uh, pitches in order to create a mixed chest voice sound or a, a high mix sound. Um, and as we start to get up then into those higher, up to say a D, so this is a G4 up to a D5. Uh, So you can hear a little bit of a switch happening there. Um, and that is more of a registration, or sorry, more of a vocal track shaping uh, transition as well as what's happening at the vocal folds. As the vocal folds start to go from their thickest into a nice thin configuration as we start to approach a pure head voice where the folds are in their thinnest, longest configuration, as we start to approach that pure head voice sound, we're starting to mix to get that upper belt sound, and that starts to get us into like thinner folds, but we're keeping those folds, um, we're working to coordinate so that we're still in a chest voice sound without blasting, and we're making sure that we're keeping our um, contemporary shaping as we go higher. So, that's the breakdown, and you can go as high as you like. At some point, you're gonna start mixing in a head voice. I cannot get out of the sun. Sorry, so now I've got this like a mask across my face. This is, I'm coming at you from like Rocky Raccoon land. Um, but as we start to get into super high stuff then, that's going to start, and by super high, I mean as we start to get above an E, for example, um, an E, what is that, an E5, as we start to get above E5, where the transition will occur, um, into a pure head voice configuration of the vocal folds. So where the vocal folds are actually at their thinnest and they're meeting with a triangular glottis, we're in mode two, we're in head voice, we're in, um, uh, you know, all the other falsetto, sometimes we say falsetto, we're in all of those other terms that we use for the upper register, where the folds are at, they are actually now meeting at their thinnest, that's where we start to lose the ability to have, um, that's where the only thing that's gonna, that's gonna, um, uh, get us a contemporary versus a classical sound is vocal track shaping. So if we're above that, this isn't where I really wanted to go today. Should I say it? Okay, I'll just say it right at the end here. So if we're above an E, I, the way I'm making that sound not as classical as it could is I'm, you can see my vocal track shape, right? So as soon as I go into vibrato, I give myself away because I have a very classical vibrato, but uh, maybe I can change that someday, who knows? Uh, but that's, that's the way that we're transitioning, or that's the way that we are um, able to create a contemporary sound as we're up in pure head voices through what we're doing with the vocal track shaping. And then that becomes our, um, oh gosh, and now that other light went off. I don't even, what is happening? I'm having so many technical difficulties today. I'm so sorry. Anyway, if you get a chance, take a listen to Jennifer's episode on uh, the Full Voice Podcast with Nikki Loney. Like I said, I'll put the, I'll put the links up. And uh, she has a bunch of other fabulous exercises in there for registration. And she breaks it down, what's happening and why these exercises work so beautifully. And um, yeah, that's just a little, little hit of some voice ped to just really deconstruct the exercise so that you really understand what's going on. But I also really love the fact that that exercise helps you work mix, full on mix. So it helps you to have the coordination that you need, not only at the vocal track level, but obviously with the breathing, but also with the, the uh, shaping of the vocal tract. Sorry, did I say vocal track level? Not only at the vocal fold level, so at the level of the glottis, not only in the vocal fold level, but also at the shaping of the vocal tract, 
as well as the breathing to give you this um, this mix that we're all looking to do this contemporary mix sound that um, we all need to do and that isn't a full-on belt right this isn't a full-on open loud belt this is a mix sound and as Jennifer says we can fool people by the way we shape our vocal tract right so if I do like a okay I'm not I'm done I'm good it's good we're, we're that's lots that's lots for now I'm not gonna, I could talk all day rain it in Shannon rain it in anyway um great thanks for tuning in folks that's um that's your like Friday little voice ped power up <laughs> Go forth and use Jennifer's exercise. Go forth and do registration. Have fun with registration. Take care.